Hi, I'm Larry Puckett, the DCC Guide. Today I want to continue with some of the work we've been doing here on the uh, modules. Specifically, as I promised, we're going to go ahead and I'll show you how I go about installing the under the truck magnets uh, for use with KDs. And uh, we'll go ahead and do one of those down there uh, at the approach to the engine shed. But uh, also, before we get into that, I've got some changes that I've made to the layout to show you. You know, they say that idle hands are the devil's plaything. Well, I got idle the other day and started working around here in the yard and, you know, found out some things that I needed to change. And uh, we'll go ahead and, and uh, uh, tackle that first before we move on to installing the under the track magnets. So stick around for the rest of the video. Okay, before we get started, I want to ask you to take a second to subscribe. Click on the subscribe box, and when that comes up, click on the little bell right next to it and click all. That way you'll be notified every time that I upload a new video. Uh, so first, uh, let's take a look at some of the changes that have to come about. Okay, um, in looking uh, at the overall truck plan and the uh, kits that I've got to install here, uh, I got out the uh, parts for this, uh, for the good shit. This turned out to be a bit bigger than I had remembered. And as a result, when I put in a uh, piece of the uh, of the platform uh, here and added this in, I found out that I needed to either move the shed back or cut it back significantly or do both. So what I decided to do, and this is, let me point out, this is always something you should do. After you've transferred your truck plan to the layout uh, and before you've started laying any truck, okay, go ahead and lay some track out, get your cars out, get uh, some structure parts out, or the structures, if you've already put them together, and start doing some test fitting. Make sure everything is gonna fit the way you planned on it, because all too often, that isn't the case, at least I've found anyway. So it's always a good idea to go ahead and make sure that your initial assumptions about how you wanted to do things are actually going to work the way you wanted to do them. Now, like I said, I could take this shed, I could cut it down to just a single wall uh, thickness here, and similarly over here on this side, and it would have fit. But it just would not have looked right uh, as far as that goes. And this, very, this looks very, very much like the uh, shed that was used at Torrington for this milk loading operation. So I was more interested in keeping this than I was keeping the original truck plan as I had done it. So what I did then was, I dispensed with this first truck that came off the yard ladder and went to the good shed. And that allowed me to fit the platform in. I can use a narrower piece of, of platform. Fortunately, these Pico kits come with uh, scores and, and the like so that you can make them different widths by cutting off these various pieces. So I can go with a fairly narrow platform on, the, uh, on this side and the wider platform over here for the station. And that's what I'm going to do. And then that allows me to go ahead, I put the good shed itself on this second set of trucks down in here that I had originally planned on having. And then the piece of track that went down to the cattle, uh, what I decided to do with that is use it for a just a general use uh, uh, truck and we can put in an, a crane right here to unload cars and put in a uh, and put in a dock right here where uh, where we can unload cars as well. So that's my plan right now is to be able to use those. I, I also am planning now on um, laying all of my track um, at least in the yard directly on the green foam and that will allow me to uh, actually build up the materials uh, here uh, behind the good shed so that it, the track is essentially buried in the mud type of thing. And trucks can roll across uh, that very easily and approach the yard, it's the good shed 
itself. So that's one idea that I'm that I'm toying with. Uh, I could also just cut it off right here and and uh, stop it. But the good thing about this is, it, you know, it gives you more room to work here on the on the ladder. It gives you a place where you can back up more cars and a locomotive if you need it to work that way. And that's important for the other reason that I'm going to show you here in just a second. Okay, so what I did is I repositioned the the, the turnout that was down lower here, uh, up back up into the ladder, and that way it allows me to have a, uh, a, a turnout that is going out to a track uh, a little bit higher up. And what I'm going to put out here uh, is, instead of the uh, domestic coal dealer and, and the track that runs out to the gas works, I'm going to put the uh, cattle pen right here. That gives me a good straight stretch here after I come out of the uh, turnout to place a magnet uh, for uncoupling cars and then I can push the cars in here using delayed uncoupling and drop them off in front of the cattle pen which is this, this kit here is the outline for the cattle pen itself uh, and then uh, that way I will have this whole area out further to the right that will be basically empty and I'm going to use that for some greenery a meadow and some trees and, and you know give it that bucolic rural England from the 1930s or earlier uh, type of appearance. Okay, so up here on the ladder where I had this turnout running off to this track, uh, to the good shed, I turned it around and turned it so that it allows me to have another track going off this way uh, to the right that uh, can be used uh, to provide access to uh, a coal dealer located here and then run on over to our gas works over on the far right. And what this does, it adds a lot more interest to the scene because you've got this nice curved track coming out here. It also uh, puts the coal dealer and the uh, coal uh, use at the uh, gas works uh, on the same track. And also we'll be able to uh, stash a, uh, a wagon over here uh, for coke. So that allows us to work all of that off of that track and separates it from uh, our cattle pen here on the lower left uh, where I showed you a minute ago uh, on this other track. So we've got a lot more interest built in here uh, because of this and also these I like these nice sinuous curves. If you look at a lot of the uh, track plans um, for uh, uh, the GWR type track plans you will see that they had these kind of things quite a lot uh, on them. Uh, I've seen it at uh, the Princetown tracks, track plan. Uh, you look at the Bodmin track plan, it's like that. So, you know, it, it just adds a lot more interest, I think. Okay, so today, as I said earlier, we're going to go ahead and install an under-the-track magnet for use with our KDs. And I'm going to put it right here on the lead to our engine shed. So the first thing we've got is the mainline turnout that is positioned here. That's the final position for it. I've gone ahead and marked it and I've used these T-pins that are used by modelers a lot of the time. And the reason they're called T-pins is got they have this little T-shaped uh, top on them uh, to uh, make it easier to push them into the, into the layout. So I've used those to uh, set the position of the turnout so what we need to worry about doing next is get a straight line up through here so that the locomotive can push a, a car of coal up here. We're going to have a uh, what's called a coal stage, uh, which is where they would put the coal and then they could shovel it into the locomotive uh, later. So uh, let's go ahead and do a quick test on this. I've got one of my 060 steam locomotives here. Okay, that's on the track, and a uh, you can see it's a loco coal uh, wagon here. Okay, so that gives us a nice straight stretch right through here where we can put the magnet. And we're going to want to put that magnet right here at this position, uh, midpoint of the coupler. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to go ahead, move this turnout back a little bit, and make a mark right here. I'm going to give it a little bit more cushion. Uh, I'm going to make a mark right here with a little arrow head on it 
so that we know that's the spot where we want the center of our under the track magnet to be located. So we can now get this locomotive and car out of the way. And let's go ahead and get this out of the package and we can start making some more measurements for that. Okay, so we're going to want it right here. So let me take this out of the way. So it's going to be located right in that position. And I'm going to go ahead and mark its location like so. Okay. Now, another thing that we want to do is to go ahead and draw a line uh, up from the, the turnout so that we have the center line established on this straight approach. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and set that in there. And then I'm going to step aside a little bit and line it up. And we'll bring it up right through here. So, as you can see then, we need to move our magnet just a little bit further back on this center line and mark it. Okay, so that's where we're going to want the magnet. Now the next step will be using the cork road bed that I use. This comes from a company called Midwest uh, Products here in the United States and it is already pre-cut so you can see it splits and I can peel that apart like so. And then when I put it together, I have the proper width for HO scale. And as you can see, the sides over here are tapered. So that gives me that profile that we want for the road bed. Okay. So let me go ahead. I'm going to move this magnet out of the way. And the next step will be to go ahead and plan for the rest of this track because we know this is going to be the straight center line. And I went ahead and marked, let's take a look at this real quick. So if that's going to be located right there, then we need the end of the, lo of the car to be positioned, you know, on the center line. And uh, so let's go ahead and mark it right there as the position where the uh, end of that straight segment can be. Okay. And now I've got a piece of track to play with. So we're going to lay it on our center line here. And we know it needs to stay straight right to this point. So then I'm going to start moving it because I want this engine shed and I made a cutout here for the uh, 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 dimensions of the engine shed itself. And I'm going to place this in position where I want the engine shed to be, roughly, this end. And then we're going to do some tests because we want this to come out straight to that point and then to angle off so that it can go into this shed. And, you know, these curves can be pretty tight. We're not wedded to a very uh, uh, wide radius because these little 060s, particularly the one that's going to be stationed here, is going to be able to go through fairly uh, short radius curves. Okay, so that's about what we want right there. What I'm going to do is take some of these pins and pin the uh, piece of track down into the position that I want as far as the straight segment, like so. And I'm going to put a couple here in the center just to keep it from moving around like that. And then I can go ahead and bend it to the final position I want for the engine shed out here. Okay. And we're going to put a couple of these T-pins at the turn. And then also out here.
Okay, so that way we'll have a nice straight approach where the locomotive can come in and cut loose a car right here, a car, uh, this load of coal, and the locomotive itself, uh, when it's done with its duties and is through for the day, can go ahead and be placed in the engine shed for its storage overnight. So what I want to do then is go ahead, let's get our magic marker or Sharpie out, and I'm going to mark the dimensions here, or the position anyway, for the outside of the track, like so. And uh, I'm going to finish up out here at the end, although it's not going to be this long. Okay, And I'm going to mark the center point here and a center point here. And we'll go ahead and do a bunch of center points along this curve so we can get that right every time. And then we've already got the center here marked. Okay, And this guy is marked. Okay, so now, now we need to go ahead and start cutting the cork to fit in these positions. Now, the reason I'm not going to go ahead and lay cork out here at this point is for two reasons. First off, until I get the electromagnets in, in the order that I've placed with Walther's, my Walther's dealer, uh, I can't go ahead and install those down the main. So therefore, I cannot go ahead and, and install anything here on the main. Also, I don't have my blue point controllers. These are what I'm going to use to control the turnouts here on the layout instead of tortoises. You'll see they work just pretty much like a tortoise. Right through there, you throw those little projections there, and that causes the uh, swing arm here to activate. It also has a nice double pull, double throw switch here on the bottom that you can use for controlling polarity of the frogs. So I've got these on order too. So I'm kind of stuck for now. But at any rate, when those come in and we can go ahead and finish uh, laying the rest of the main line, I will trim off this part of this uh, piece of, of uh, cork bed, road bed, so that we can lay the, uh, the, the, the main line right up against it. So, but for now though, all I'm going to do is cut it so that the, we can go ahead and install it right here, okay? And then we're going to need a companion piece for the other side. And by the way, let me point out, if you're using this cork road bed, uh, because of the way it's cut, they're not exactly the same dimensions on each side. So you can't mix and match. One side is a little bit wider. So don't try to do that. What you want to do is lay them right up against each other like this and make your cut. So that they are from the opposite sides of the original piece of cork. Okay? And that's going to allow us to install that right there. Okay? Now, next, let's get the magnet and put the magnet back into position here, like so. Okay? And then we're going to want to run that all the way in here into the engine shed. So I'm butting it right up against the magnet almost and up against the center line that I created earlier. And we can go ahead and work our way now around this shallow curve into the engine house approach. Like that. Okay? And bring it on through. So I've gone ahead, I'm going to put some pins in here, and I'm going to go ahead then and trim the end of this piece of uh, road bed shy of the end of the building itself. Okay. Now I'm going to do the same thing with this one. Put it right up against the other one, like so. Get it set down, move it on up here, and on up here. So we will have a nice flowing 
road bed and track alignment into the engine shed. Like so. Okay, so now we have our uh, cork road bed measured out. We have the uh, magnet in place here. So all we have to do next is get out the glue or adhesive as it were. And I use the same adhesive, that the liquid nails for projects uh, to um, attach my, uh, my road bed and my track as well. So the first thing we're gonna wanna do then is go ahead and take these and lay those. I can now, whoops, let me go ahead. I need to mark the locations here of my road bed at this end. Like so. All the way around. Like that. Now, now we can pull all these pins out, now that everything is marked. Keep them out because you're going to need them to hold everything down while the glue or adhesive sets up. There. Okay, so I've got my liquid nails for projects ready. And let's go ahead and lay some adhesive. Let me close this before I cut myself. Okay, so that's done. And now I've got my putty knife again, so let's go ahead and we're going to Lay this out here in a nice, even line on both sides of that original red line that we made, okay? Like that. So we know exactly where that center line is. And again, you can just make little scratch marks in the adhesive so you can see exactly where that red line is if it's not readily visible to you. Put a little bit more adhesive right in there. Everything else looks like it's got a pretty good coat of adhesive. Okay, so now that those are down, we can go ahead and install our cork road bed like this make sure that that center line is over top of the uh, center line that we drew earlier okay. there and just press that into place like that and then I'm going to use a couple of pins here and a couple of pins out here to hold everything in place while that adhesive sets. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and we'll uh, work on this edge. I want to make sure I've got a good clear view of where those red center lines are located. I'm also, just to be sure, going to There, get that out of the way. I'm going to put the magnet back here between the uh, between the ends of the road bed, and go ahead and set that first one there. Pull it back just a hair. There we go. Okay, and then come up here, and basically I'm just following that line that I drew 
to establish the shallow curve into the engine house. There. Now, I'm going to bring the other one over and set it in place and pin it. And we're going to do a magnet test up. There we go. It's a nice tight fit there, which is what you like. Okay, bring it around. Like so. And I'm going to run these pins all the way out to the end of the engine house track. Okay, and that's all there is to it. And we'll eventually be able to lay our track on top of the road bed right over the magnet, just like I've shown you for installing the road bed itself. I'll put a bead of the uh, adhesive on the road bed and across the top of the magnet, smooth it all the way out uh, along the length of the cork, and then we can lay the track right on top of it. And we'll do that for the turnouts as well. So that'll be the, I think, the next thing we'll be doing. Hopefully, uh, by next Friday, the electromagnets should be in. And, for the, and that's going to uh, mean that we can go ahead and do a video next Friday, hopefully, on installing the KD electromagnets. Well, I hope you got something out of that exercise, uh, both the redesign of the uh, freight yard or the goods yard, and also installing the under the truck magnet for use with KD couplers. So, uh, let's see, on Monday. Monday we're going to go ahead and I'm going to do some more with uh, KDs, uh, specifically how to install them and how to fine tune them uh, when you do install them so they will work reliably for you. So, have a great weekend, you know, be safe, uh, wear your mask and avoid COVID. And I'll see you again here the first of the week with the video on installing KDs in your rolling stock and your locomotives. So, see you then. Bye now.